Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Gabby Vieira, this year's program assistant for immigration and refugee policy, who is wildly nervous about going first, so <laughs> please bear with me. There are two pieces of wisdom I remember my parents consistently imparting while I was growing up. Do what makes you happy and don't forget where you came from. Seems pretty straightforward, right? Pretty basic advice. But they mean something more coming from family who know that doing what makes you happy isn't always a given, an opportunity ready to be grabbed, and that not everyone remembers where they came from if that opportunity does arrive. So I took these cliches to heart and together they shaped my vision for what life should look like. As I grew up, these, day, these ideas obviously started to become more relevant. I got older, progressed in school, and began to realize that math wasn't really my thing, science certainly wasn't my thing, um, and I tried to figure out what it was that really made me happy. Believe it or not, I decided that it was learning about what was really messed up in the world. I wanted to understand where unfairness and injustice came from and what my role was in fixing it. I told my parents I wanted to change the world and they thought, yes, future lawyer, president of the United States. They kept pushing, follow your dreams, love what you do. And probably found themselves a little disappointed when I came home freshman year of college, not pre-law or on any policy track, but a history major. Now I'm the first person to validate the skills you garner with a history degree. But to my family who was supporting my education so that I'd be on track for a successful career, a history degree seemed pretty useless. I understood this. They wanted me to work towards something great, at least the version of great that they recognized, which usually involved money or recognition or, you know, general employability. <laughs> As supportive as they were, it wasn't clear to them how studying something like history could get me any of those things. I remember telling them it was what I loved, what made me happy, and subsequently seeing the recognition and regret slowly creep onto their faces. <laughs> but history was how I understood the world, how I could start to grasp where the inequalities that were deeply entrenched in my family's concerns came from. It taught me why they, a family of South American immigrants, had to face the issues that come with migration and status inequality, and why they worked so hard to make sure that I didn't have to do the same myself. It taught me why a classmate once called the neighborhood I grew up in sketchy, and why there was no one who looked like her in it. Studying the history of race and migration taught me why things are the way they are, and as I witnessed its impact on my loved ones, it also taught me why I cared. Yet the more I loved and related to what I studied, the harder it was to find work that made me feel the same way. It felt like there was always something missing, which resulted in an apathy that I wasn't used to feeling. And the greater it grew, the more I wondered where that high schooler was that thought she could change the world. With no clear career path and my final year of college looming with the necessity to pick a future, I was afraid of disappointing my parents, of disappointing myself, and I was afraid that in the end I would have to give up on one of my tenants, work a job I hated or do something that made no difference and didn't matter. But flash forward to graduation. I've accepted a position with FCNL and couldn't be more excited. How much I would love it, I didn't know at the time, but at the very least I knew I'd be working on something that mattered to me, immigration. We're all sitting around a restaurant table and my parents are excitedly trying to explain what I'll be doing the following year to the rest of my family. Uh, we roll about 15 deep, by the way, usually with grandparents and aunts and uncles and cousins. For us, everyone is immediate family. And so I see a lot of them start to get emotional, which of course makes me emotional. They start telling me how proud they are that I've not only graduated, but I'm going to work in the capital of the country on something so important and so close to home. You're representing for us, one of my uncles said, and it meant so much for me to hear that. I wasn't forgetting where I came from. My work would be meaningful. And I would come to really love it too. So I'm grateful to FCNL for allowing me to maintain those two tenets that I've held so close. The other day I was speaking with someone for a project that I'm working on here. We spoke in Spanish about an immigrant mother that her meeting hoped to help find her potentially detained son. 
In our conversation, she used a phrase that my own mother has used before in describing our own family's experience coming to the US. It was just another cliche, the one about your family wanting you to have what they didn't. Los padres siempre les quieren dar a los hijos mundos más que lo que, lo que tuvieron ellos. But again, this cliche meant something more. So later that day, I call my mom and my grandma, as I do pretty much every other day. I just told them about my work. I talked about my efforts to expand our, re our reach to Spanish speakers and to learn about different experiences with immigration enforcement, about how hearing and reading these kinds of stories can be so motivating when the policy end gets particularly frustrating, and how it all reminds me that in so many ways, they succeeded. I am incredibly lucky to say that I have been granted so much more than they had. Growing up with parents who always worked for me to have more, going to college and learning just for the sake of learning, having work that makes me happy and allows me to contribute to my own community, that makes me believe once more that I really can change the world. These are all luxuries beyond what I could have asked for. Thank you.